Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keeps the sayings. Keeps. To guard. To detain. Hold fast. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I heard them and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. Then he saith unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren, the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book, worship God. And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. Set. is remains for the occasion remains ready he that is unjust let him be unjust still and he which is filthy let him be filthy still and he that is righteous let him be righteous still and he that is holy let him be holy still behold I come quickly and my reward is with me, to give to every man according as his work shall be. Deed, doing, labor, work. <clears throat> Today's question is, how is Jesus our Sabbath rest? In this video, I'll answer that question from a biblical perspective. Afterwards, as always, I'll share some helpful resources, so stick around until the end. The key to understanding how Jesus is our Sabbath rest is the Hebrew word Sabbat, which means to rest or stop or cease from work. The origin of the Sabbath goes back to creation. After creating the heavens and the earth, in six days God rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. Genesis chapter 2 verse 2. This doesn't mean that God was tired and needed rest. We know that God is omnipotent, literally all-powerful. He has all the power in the universe. He never tires and his most arduous expenditure of energy does not diminish his power one bit. So what does it mean that God rested on the seventh day? Simply that he stopped what he was doing. He ceased from his labors. This is important in understanding the establishment of the Sabbath day and the role of Christ as our Sabbath rest. God used the example of his resting on the seventh day of creation to establish the principle of the Sabbath day rest for his people. In Exodus chapter 20 verses 8 through 11 and Deuteronomy chapter 5 verses 12 through 15, God gave the Israelites the fourth of his ten commandments. They were to remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. One day out of every seven, they were to rest from their labors and give the same day of rest to their servants and animals. This was not just a physical rest, but a cessation of laboring. Whatever work they were engaged in was to stop for a full day each week. Please see our other answers to questions on the Sabbath day, Saturday versus Sunday, and Sabbath keeping to explore this issue further. The Sabbath day was established so the people would rest from their labors, only to begin after one day of rest. The various elements of the Sabbath symbolize the coming of the Messiah, who would provide a permanent rest for his people. 
Once again, the example of resting from our labors comes into play. The various elements of the Sabbath symbolize the coming of the Messiah, who would provide a permanent rest for his people. Once again, the example of resting from our labors comes into play. The Mark of the Beast And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads and that no man might buy or sell except he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. Who works. 666 six, six. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up for ever and ever. And they had no rest, day nor night. And they had no rest, day nor night. Who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Once again, the example coming of the Messiah, who would provide a permanent rest for his people. Once again, the coming of the Messiah, who would provide a permanent rest for his people. Coming of the Messiah, who would provide a permanent rest for his people. And rest for his people. And rest for his people. And rest for his people. His people. His people. His people. Once again, the example of resting from our labors comes into play. With the establishment of the Old Testament law, the Jews were constantly laboring to make themselves acceptable to God. Their labors included trying to obey a myriad of do's and don'ts of the ceremonial law. Their labors included trying to obey a myriad of do's and don'ts of the ceremonial law. The Sabbath day was established so the people would rest from their labors, only to begin after one day of rest. The various elements of the Sabbath symbolize the coming of the Messiah, who would provide a permanent rest for his people. Once again, the example of resting from our labors comes into play. With the establishment of the Old Testament law, the Jews were constantly laboring to make themselves acceptable to God. Their labors included trying to obey a myriad of do's and don'ts of the ceremonial law, the temple law, the civil law, etc. And of course, they couldn't possibly keep all of those laws. So God provided an array of sin offerings and sacrifices so they could come to him for forgiveness and restore fellowship with him, but only temporarily. Just as they began their physical labors after one day of rest, so too did they have to continue to offer sacrifices. Their labors included trying to obey a myriad of do's and don'ts of the ceremonial law. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1 tells us that the law can never, by the same sacrifices repeated endlessly year after year, make perfect those who draw near to worship. But these sacrifices were offered in anticipation of the ultimate sacrifice of Christ on the cross, who, after he had offered one sacrifice for sin forever, sat down on the right of God. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 12. Just as he rested after performing the ultimate sacrifice, he sat down and rested, ceased from his labor of atonement because there was nothing more to be done. He sat down and rested, ceased from his labor of atonement because there was nothing more to be done. He sat down and rested, ceased from his labor of atonement because there was nothing more to be done. Ever, 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 ever. Because of what he did, we no longer have to labor in law keeping in order to be justified in the sight of God. Jesus was sent so that we might rest in God and in what he has provided. Because of what he did, we no longer have to labor in law keeping in order to be justified in the sight of God. Jesus was sent so that we might rest in God and in what he has provided. Another element of the Sabbath day rest in which God instituted as a foreshadowing of our complete rest in Christ is that he blessed it, sanctified it, and made it holy. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he that is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give to every man according as his work shall be. Labor. Doing. Work. see the symbol of Christ as our Sabbath rest, the holy, perfect Son of God who sanctifies and makes holy all who believe in him. Jesus was sent so that we might rest in God and in what he has provided. 
Another element of the Sabbath day rest in which God instituted as a foreshadowing of our complete rest in Christ is that he blessed it, sanctified it, and made it holy. Holy. Here again, we see the symbol of Christ as our Sabbath rest, the holy, perfect Son of God who sanctifies and makes holy all who believe in him. Holy. Holy. God sanctified Christ, just as he sanctified the Sabbath day and sent him into the world, John chapter 10, verse 36, to be our sacrifice for sin. In him, we find complete rest from our labors of self-effort because he alone is holy and righteous. We find complete rest from our labors of self-effort because he alone is holy and righteous. God made him who we find complete rest from our labors of self-effort because he alone is holy and righteous. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. We can now cease from our spiritual labors and rest in him, not just one day a week, but always. But always. Jesus can be our Sabbath rest in part because he is Lord of the Sabbath. Matthew chapter 12, verse 8. As God incarnate, he decides the true meaning of the Sabbath because he created it and he is our Sabbath rest in the flesh. When the Pharisees criticized him for healing on the Sabbath, Jesus reminded them that even they, sinful as they were, would not hesitate to pull a sheep out of a pit on the Sabbath. Because he came to seek and save his sheep who would hear his voice, John chapter 10, verse 3 and 27, and enter into the Sabbath rest he provided by paying for their sins, he could break the Sabbath rules. He told the Pharisees that people are more important than sheep and that the salvation he provided was more important than rules. By saying the Sabbath was not made for man, but man for the Sabbath, Mark chapter 2, verse 27, Jesus was restating the principle that the Sabbath rest was instituted to relieve man of his labors. Jesus was restating the principle that the Sabbath rest was instituted to relieve man of his labors, to relieve man of his labors, just as he came to relieve us of our attempting to achieve salvation by our works. We no longer rest for only one day, but forever cease from our laboring to attain God's favor. Jesus is our rest from works now, just as he is the door to heaven where we will rest in him forever. He Jesus is our rest from works now, just as he is the door to heaven where we will rest in him forever. Hebrews chapter 4 is the definitive passage regarding Jesus as our Sabbath rest. The writer to the Hebrews exhorts his readers to enter into the Sabbath rest provided by Christ. After three chapters of telling them that Jesus is superior to the angels and that he is our apostle and high priest, he pleads with them to not harden their hearts against him as their fathers hardened their hearts against the Lord in the wilderness. Because of their unbelief, God denied that generation access to the Holy Land, saying, They shall not enter into my rest. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 11. In the same way, the writer to the Hebrews begs his readers because of their unbelief, God denied that generation access to the Holy Land, saying, They shall not enter into my rest. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 11. In the same way, the writer to the Hebrews begs his readers not to make the same mistake by rejecting God's Sabbath rest in Jesus Christ. There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God, for anyone who enters God's rest also rests from his own work, just as God did from his. Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest, so that no one will fall by following their example of disobedience. Hebrews chapter 4 verses 9 through 11. There is no other Sabbath rest besides Jesus. He alone satisfies the requirements of the law, and he alone provides the sacrifice that atones for sin. He is God's plan for us to cease from the labor of our own works. We dare not reject this one and only way of salvation. John chapter 14, verse 6. God's reaction to those who choose to reject his plan is seen in Numbers chapter 15. A man was found gathering sticks on the Sabbath day in spite of God's plain commandment to cease from all labor on the Sabbath. This transgression was a known and willful sin done with unblushing boldness and broad daily in open defiance of the divine authority. Then the Lord said to Moses, the man must die. The whole assembly must stone him outside the camp. Verse 35. So it will be to all who reject God's provision for our Sabbath rest in Christ. So it will be to all who reject God's provision for our Sabbath rest in Christ. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? Hebrews chapter 2 verse 3. 